Hello everyone, my name is Isabel Bangelbeck and I'm here to tell you more about animal source foods and human nutrition. Thanks to my colleagues Delia, Andrew and Paula for their comments and suggestions. Let's start with the big issues and trends in the developing world. Some animal source foods are considered unhealthy in the developed world. So one may ask, why should we actually invest in greater producti pro production of animal source food and why should we do it now? Indeed, most stakeholders are focusing on fortified crops, for example, the orange slash sweet potatoes, as an avenue to improve nutritional status of the population. And the role of animal source foods is considered limited Due to, due to the high costs of those products and sometimes lower access as well. So in, in a way, livestock production would be by the poor and meat, and meat consumption for the rich. Yet there's an increased understanding that we need to work on food-based approaches, which means a world diversified diet approach in which animal source food played a crucial role, role in filling uh, multiple nutrient, nutrient gaps and at the same time enhancing absorption of plant-based nutrients in the diet. Therefore, the importance for us to promote animal, animal source foods as part of the diet. To be able to do that is about increasing availability of animal source foods through increased productivity and as well improve preservation methods to extend the shelf, the shelf life of this product. Added to that is the complexity of intra-household food allocation and the role that women and men empowerment play in that, in that allocation. Now moving to the second slide on who is doing what or proposing to do what. The first point is about assessing the consumption of animal source food in terms of, pre in terms of frequency. So for example, how often milk is being consumed or fish and in some cases as well quantity, and those relationship uh, with nutritional status. So for example, the Kenyan peri-urban dairy survey uh, led by H4NH last year, uh, Paula led that work looking at what uh, base, food-based in interventions would ensure dietary adequacy for all nutrients with the conclusion of the high cost of that intervention would be. Uganda had a nutrition survey last year and looking for the waiting for the results and the Tanzania consumption survey is uh, will start later this year. Our second point is about improving our tools to measure how much households and men and people within households are eating. The Imana grant we've put forward with wallfish. Uh, Irwin wallfish facing common challenges in not having sufficient tools to be able to measure how much households are eating, which is really important for nutrient-dense foods, and understanding how food is, is shared. Third point on improving our understanding of the relationship between women empowerment and intra-households uh, animal source food allocation which is as well, uh, if successful, will be able to be, possi will be possible through the email grants with uh, Emory University. And uh, to consolidate our, our results, we, ha we are looking at uh, drafting our livestock and fish nutrition strategy plan in 2015. H4NH is leading interesting research very relevant to, uh, to livestock and fish, in particular the framework for integrated integrated assessment of nutri nutrition and food safety risks and, and other, other points as below. So around which issues should uh, livestock and fish best position itself? And I have two first points from the London Nutrition Meeting early this year. The first point is about uh, what, has, what is the research and advocacy which is needed to convince others of the role that animal source food needs to play in, uh, in improving in nutritional status of the population. What kind of proper animal source food systems um, should we promote? How can we improve indicators and methods for assessing intake, as I already mentioned in my previous slides? What technologies to improve nutritional value and delivery of animal source foods? Food safety strategies that improve quality, whether while enhancing rather than restricting access um, by the poor. 
and what kind of nutrition interventions are required to optimize to optimize use and benefits for example education school feeding program etc thanks a lot for listening and looking forward to your comments later bye